So it's been a really fun year in footwear. There have been a lot of comfortable sneakers that released this year, and I wanted to give you guys my finalized top 10 list of comfortable sneakers in 2021. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Hey, what is going on guys? Hess here. Hopefully you guys are having a good day out there. If you guys are new to my channel and you guys enjoy the content, please consider subscribing. And if you guys haven't used my website, Collective Kicks, I post a bunch of sneaker deals that I find for you guys on a weekly basis over there. So check that out always in the description. If you guys want to buy any of the sneakers that I'm going to be talking about in this video, check the description and you can go ahead and click the links. It will take you to the respective sneakers sites. And I do get a small commission and a small kickback from when you guys use my links and it does help support the channel and uh, much appreciated when you guys do that. But this link is uh, pretty full, man. There's a lot of really, really good sneakers this year. Some of them that I would have put lower on the list earlier than a year, but as I just ended up wearing more of them uh, through the year, uh, you know, it kind of changed my list a little bit from the previous version of this, which I did probably six months ago. So starting off with the runner-ups, we have the Adidas Terex Free Hiker Cold Ready. Now this is an amazing sneaker. It's very comfortable. It's more of a sneaker boot though. And so I didn't want to consider it in the countdown. However, for winter sneakers, for fall sneakers, this sneaker boot is absolutely uh, amazing. Also from Adidas, we have the Adidas 40 Forward, which is a really nice version of the 40 technology. It's actually the most comfortable version uh, to date, in my opinion, of the Adidas 40 technology. The last runner up that I wanted to mention is the Puma Deviate Nitro. This is a really nice shoe, very comfortable sneaker cushioning. It was just barely edged out of the top 10. Honestly, I need to try some of the other models. Some of you guys have left comments saying I need to try some of the other offerings from Puma because that one, I didn't like the little heel thing that came out of it. It was just kind of a sharp plastic piece that just didn't belong there. But uh, the technology is there. It's very soft, very good on feet, uh, but just barely out of the top 10. I did want to mention that my feet are obviously different than your guys' feet. And my opinion of what is comfortable is obviously very different than what your opinion could be. So if you have a variance, just please leave a comment in the comment section what your like top two or three comfort sneakers of the year are. Number 10 spot goes to a pair that I honestly didn't think would make the countdown, but APL bringing some heat, man, this year. They have the APL Streamline. This is a nice running sneaker. The price point is crazy though at $300, but the midsole is a proprietary midsole a foam cushiony technology and the upper is actually pretty nice. A lot of people said it looked like a Nike ripoff sneaker, but I'll tell you, I got a pair of them, wore them around and they're very comfortable. It's just one of those shoes that uh, was very surprising. I even got my wife a pair of them. So number 10 spot, APL entering that countdown for top 10 comfortable sneakers. I actually like the look of the sneakers as well. I think they look pretty nice. APL also has really nice offerings in the flip-flop category, the sandals, and I have a video coming very soon for those as well, top 10 sandals. Uh, so excited to bring you guys a follow up on that one as well. Number nine spot's gonna go to one that it's just kind of tried and true for myself and one that I really uh, enjoyed through the year. And it's a Nike Infinity React 2 and I know that's not the proper name convention of what they say. It's a Nike React Infinity, flying it, blah, blah, blah. But I call it the Nike Infinity React 2 and it is a good one and I like the detached tongue on it. The knit upper is really nice in those. It's a comfortable shoe. It also has a wider midsole so it's definitely nice for like the wide footers out there. I would say that overall fit on those is like true to size or you could even go up a half a size personally. Uh, it just depends on what you uh, prefer. I like extra wiggle room for myself sometimes. Also tied with that is the Pegasus 38. Um, that's another great alternative, but the Pegasus 38s with that React technology in the midsole along with the Zoom airbag of the forefoot, those are really nice as well, and they're like $120, $130, something like that. Uh, definitely a nice pair of shoes, very comfortable, and a great all-around pair of sneakers. Additionally, I would mention the Vimero 16, which is another great offering, and it does have a Zoom X midsole, which is really nice and comfortable. However, I will say that Zoom X is a little bit different compound than the regular Zoom X, it doesn't take away the fact that those are extremely nice and comfortable and squishy on feet. So number nine spot tied for all three of those. I wanted to sum them up in one spot. Number eight spot goes to one that I'm very impressed with this year and very excited to see where Brooks takes things. We have the Brooks Aurora BL. This sneaker looks crazy. Obviously the midsole looks like a cloud cushioning. It's absolutely insane. But when you wear them, it's like really, really good. It's another one of the offerings that has a nitrogen injected midsole, which makes it insanely crazy and like, I know there's a couple different brands that do this as well and I expect we're gonna see a lot more of it because the products end up being lightweight, they end up being really comfortable and squishy. I think actually Skechers is the first brand that actually came to market, which I'm not bringing Skechers in the top 10 this 
year because I didn't actually try one of their newer models this year, which next year, 2022, I probably will because previously one of their shoes was on my list last year. I just didn't try the updated version this year. But any which way, the Brooks Aurora BL was really crazy looking, very comfortable, very futuristic and very stylish. But most importantly, it had a really big midsole that was very squishy and something I really enjoyed putting on feet. I didn't really like that sports bra sort of feel that it has over the top of your arc of your foot because the tongue is not very traditional. It literally felt like I had a crazy sports bra on my foot. Uh, if you guys saw that review video, it was kind of hilarious. But anyway, way, uh, those things are amazing and number eight spot. Number seven spot goes to the Hoka Clifton 8. Now this is a great model. The Hoka Clifton 7 was actually very similar to the 8. There wasn't a ton of changes. I did a comparison review of both of them from a casual perspective. If you've been interested in Hoka but haven't figured out which model you want to go for, it's honestly kind of confusing. There's so many different models. They offer tons of different things for tons of different types of runners, but I'm not a runner. Obviously, I just want to try comfort sneakers. And after trying a handful of different Hoka sneakers, the Clifton 7, Clifton 8 was definitely one of my favorite ones. Saw squishy, not too much roller action, not as much of that crazy Hoka effect where like the Bondi where it's so incredibly ridiculously big uh, midsole that you feel like you're on a rocking chair. The Clifton is like a soft pillowy version very nice on feet, an overall very comfortable pair of sneakers for a decent price as well. And all of these in my list is pretty much true to size is what I ended up trying. Number six spot, we have one that I haven't even reviewed yet as of right now on this channel. It's because I haven't got around to it, but it's definitely one that makes a top six, top five contender. This is the A6 Nova Blast 2, which is actually a really, really nice, solid pair of sneakers. Shout out to East Bay for actually sending a pair over to me. But this is a pair that I've been wanting to try. I tried the first one, it was pretty decent, but they made some refinements on the second one. For some reason, I just like the overall fit and the cushioning better it actually feels like when you're stepping the geometry comes together just perfectly i don't know how to describe it it just feels good when you're walking around in those things and there's a good amount of cushion on them and they're just all around a great pair of sneakers for especially that 130 dollar price point i posted them on sale for as low as like a hundred dollars when a black friday hit and stuff hopefully some of you guys grabbed them back then but it's a really comfortable pair of sneakers and definitely one that if you haven't heard of asics bringing like some nice technology to the market the other one that i would do as a runner up next to this one is the kinsei blast this is a very nice pair of sneakers as well i thought it was overloaded in tech with the gel and everything else in the middle but it was a really comfortable pair of sneakers and definitely more of a premium feel on feet than the nova blast 2 but the price point is like 180 on uh the kinsei blast but it is noteworthy that that shoe is very comfortable as well so getting into the top five, we're going to start off with the Adidas Ultra Boost 21 slash 22 because the 22s ended up coming out right at the end of the year. I would say for those wondering, and I already did a review of the 22s, I would say that the 22s are more comfortable on feet than the 21s. There's more springiness there. There's more soft, squishy feel, I guess, if, if you will. Like it's just overall better on feet, even though they look primarily exactly the same. In my comparison review video, I showed you guys some of the, the small subtle changes that they made, but the Ultra Boost 21, 22, amazing sneaker for just all around everyday casual wear. I wore the Adidas Ultra Boost 21 to Disney World, wore those pretty much every single day through the parks. It's a great pair of sneakers for standing around in line. It's also a great pair of sneakers for walking hastily from one place in the parks to the next. It was definitely a great vacation shoe, something that I will be vacationing in again. And if you're a fan of the original Adidas Ultra Boost, you should check out the newer versions because the new offerings are really nice, especially if you're used to wearing your Jordan 1s and 3s and so on. It's definitely important to have like a go-to casual pair of sneakers other than the stuff that you want to flex in. And I'll tell you that the Ultra Boost is definitely a good option. Number four spot on the list goes to the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel V2. And this is an amazing pair of sneakers for $130. You get a crazy fuel cell midsole that's so soft and squishy, very responsive as well. It's supposed to be made for runners that want to keep a quick pace, but it's so crazy when you try them on. They're incredibly soft and squishy, but they're obviously responsive as well. They do have a little bit of wobble in the heel left to right, but honestly, it's nothing that you wouldn't get used to. And honestly, for $130 bucks is the best bang for your buck if you want the softest and squishiest uh, version of something. These things are incredible. Uh, and number four spot on the list. The number three spot on the list goes to the Nike Invincible Run. Now this is a higher stacked pair of Zoom X sneakers. It has a really nice feel to them. It's a little bit wider base on them, so there's not like a stability issue, even though you have a nice, crazy, soft, squishy feel. If you haven't tried these shoes on, when you do try them on, you'll be impressed because it's probably one of the best, softest and squishiest options from Nike on the market. And it's supposed to be a running sneaker as well, but trust me, this thing is squishy. It's better than the other three offerings that I mentioned in this countdown, the Infinity React, twos the pegasus 38s and the uh, vomero 16s this is softer and squishier than all three of those uh and it's nike's best offering and i'll be curious to see what they do next year hopefully they'll do some sort of 
offering like this as well, just because I like it. It's like almost like a recovery shoe because it's so soft and squishy, but I don't really love the overall look of it. And for some reason that midsole feels a little bit hollow when I step around. Also, I wanted to mention they are a little bit heavier than they would have seemed like. Like the Rebel V2s are crazy, crazy lightweight. Comparison to these, these are a lot thicker, a lot heavier, but a really nice offering if you want something that has like a lot of squishy feel to them. And then there were two and the number two spot goes to probably one of my favorite sneakers uh, for the last two years. That's the New Balance 1080 V11 with Fresh Foam X. Now, New Balance is dominating this chart because I've been wearing them a lot last year, this year, and they're some of the most comfortable technologies on the market. We already saw the fuel cell on the number four spot. Now we have the Fresh Foam X in the number two spot. The reason why this one is higher than the fuel cell, which honestly, it's really tough to say which one I like better. But when it comes down to it, I keep going back to the 1080 V11. I think it's probably the first love sort of thing. Like it's the one that drew me to New Balance in the first place. It was like love at first squish and you try them on and you like squish down. There's just enough cloud-like feel in those things. They just, I don't know. I love the feel of them. The way the midsole is made, it was really, really good. I love the knit upper on the shoe. Like the whole thing just felt amazing on foot, top to bottom. And I absolutely love what they came up with. Now, Rebel V2s are a little bit softer, squishier, obviously, because it has fuel cell instead. But these have like more of a cloud pillow-like landing, just not as much of a spring back, if you will. Uh, but the way that they feel, man, I just absolutely prefer it. Uh, so for that reason alone, the 1080 V11 in the number two spot for myself. And if you haven't tried New Balance and some of these offerings that I've been talking about, I'm telling you guys, just go to the website, link in the description. I think that they have a return policy even for you guys, but try the 1080 V11s, try the Fuel Cell uh, Rebel V2s, and both of those are just crazy good on feet. And especially if you've never really tried anything comfortable other than the Ultra Boost, like you're gonna be blown away by what is out there. I'm curious if you guys agree or if you guys have actually tried them through the year, based on my recommendations, drop a comment and let other people know, yes or no, am I bluffing or not? Like it's fun to be able to discover something with you guys. And then like, I don't know, that, that learning phase of like what is comfortable and finding soft squishy sneakers that you enjoy on a regular basis, like these ones are some of the best. Which brings me to the number one spot, which is an interesting choice, but one that I honestly had to place here because it is, uh, and I've shown in a video already, my most worn sneaker of 2021, and that is the New Balance Laredo with Fuel Cell. This is an amazingly comfortable shoe. However, the price point is crazy at 225. Now, if you picture the Fuel Cell Rebel V2 and you guys have tried them, you guys know they're great, you like Fuel Cell, you're looking for something a little bit more premium, a little bit better, I guess. The Laredo is that option, it's that good. Like it's super squishy, super comfortable. It has stability built into it. I got the wide version because New Balance offers wide feet friendly versions for the Laredos, the 1080 V11s, the, the Rebel V2s, all of them have wide foot versions, which I have all of the wide ones, which I really, really like. Any which way, it's a comfortable pair of sneakers. There's premium feel to them. They have carbon fiber in the heel clip. Once you see that like hidden detail, you're like, whoa, they're not playing around. These things are actually pretty special. And then, I don't know, something about them, they just feel really good on feet. It's my most traveled pair of sneakers, my most worn pair of sneakers. And it's one that like I absolutely love and I hopefully will have more colorways of it. It's just one of those shoes that I think that people have been sleeping on because the price is outrageous and they don't want to pay it. But I'm telling you, it's a premium product and you feel it on feet. It's noticeably excellent. If you don't want to try this one, try the Rebel V2s. It's like the little brother, but with the same soft, squishy midsole technology. Both of them are, are really amazing. Same as the 1080 V11s. Any which way, that's my top 10 comfort sneakers of 2021, which has been a crazy year. I'm already seeing lots of technology and, and sneakers that are gonna be coming out for 2022. And it feels like a lot of these running companies are coming up with something to compete with fuel cell, something to compete with all the other great technology on the market. So it's gonna be a fun year to see what is soft squishy and what transitions over to the lifestyle side well, because there's so many different running sneakers out there. Not every running shoe is gonna be one that you're gonna to wanna to wear casually. So this is just my thoughts on some of the stuff. Again, drop some comments in the comment section of what you guys think, what are your comfortable sneakers that you go to. And again, if you wanna buy any of the ones that I talked about, check the link in the description. Anyways, hope you guys have a good rest of the day. Happy holidays. And if you guys liked the video, please drop a like and hopefully we'll see you back uh, for more videos. All right, peace guys.